Hello friends of all, welcome from Aussies Group. My name is Malcolm and I am one of the tutors at Aussies Group. Well, today's live session is on the reading section. Not exactly the reading section, but how to improve your reading score mainly. So that's what today's live session is going to be. As many of you would know, I'm one of the most experienced trainers with Aussies Group and I've been teaching PT for the last almost four years now. So, well, the thing is that it's not difficult and I won't say it's very easy but yes if you know the correct techniques and if you know the main tasks which are worth focusing your attention towards you should definitely get a very high score in reading now as all of us know the total score of reading is always out of 90 points it's not marks everything in PT is given out of 90 points and Many times people think that, you know, the reading section has gone really well, but the reading score is not up to the mark. So the thing is that there are five main tasks in reading. There are two types of fill in the blanks. There are two types of multiple choice questions. And there is a task called reorder paragraphs. So mainly these are the five main tasks in the reading section. But the actual reading score, which is out of 90, depends on a total of nine tasks that's right there are five tasks in reading and there are four other tasks in the remaining modules which also contribute to the reading score well the first task in the test is called read aloud and since you're reading something on your screen before you speak it you'll have to read it and that's where you get marks for reading similarly there's another task called summarize written text well to write a summary in a single sentence first thing you will have to do you'll have to read the passage on your screen Without reading, we cannot write, and that's why you get marks for reading and writing both. So, two tasks. One is read aloud, second is summarize written text. And finally, in the listening section, there are two other tasks in which you'll have to read something on your screen. One is called highlight correct summary, in which you need to select the best summary while listening to an audio. And the other is called highlight incorrect words, in which you have to click the wrong words on the screen. You'll have to listen to an audio and you'll have a transcript on your screen and few words will not match. You'll have to click the incorrect words. So mainly there are five main tasks in reading and four other tasks in the other modules. One in speaking, one in writing and two in listening. So total nine tasks contribute to give you a 90 out of 90 in reading. Now many times what people know and what people think is that yes in PT you do get repeated questions in the test. You know the questions are repeated again and again well that's how the test is so the thing is that many times what happens is that you get a lot of repeat questions for example a lot of fill in the blanks could be repeated in the real exam similarly reorder paragraphs questions could also be repeated in the real exam and you might have a feeling that you have performed really well in the repeated questions still when you get the score you will see that your score is much less than what you expected for example, in your previous attempt without enough preparation, you still managed to get like something like, you know, 70 out of 90 in reading. And this time with at least four or five repeated questions, still you got only like 66 out of 90 in reading. So instead of improving the score has dropped even further down. And then it's a problem, you know, like why did my score fall down even after those so many questions were repeated? So there are a couple of reasons why such a thing might happen. The first reason is that you know if the questions are repeated you know PT also knows obviously that these questions have come before and they are asking these questions again sometimes you know the same person keeps on getting the same questions again and again you know maybe it would be for from two tests previously or like three tests before you would have got the same questions now the thing is PT is actually testing you that if it asks you the same question do you still make the same mistake which you made the last time or have you improved have you worked on your grammar have you worked on your vocabulary, you know? So these are the things PT checks. And now the problem is that if you make a mistake in the repeated question, then it's a big problem. That itself is a problem because PT expects improvement. And in the, instead of that, it is the same scenario again. You do the same mistake, for example, again, you have not worked on your shortcomings. And that's one of the reasons why the reading score goes down a lot. So that's one of the things. Second very important thing could be that if in a single reading question, you know, for example, a question of fill in the blanks, if you, you know, you made a lot of mistakes, let's say you've got a lengthy passage and in the passage there are, let's say, six missing blanks. 
for example let's say it's drop down fill in the blanks drop down means reading and writing blanks that is the first task in the reading section with which it always will start now let's say out of six blanks only two are right four are wrong so basically according to me the software thinks that you know this person is not good at understanding the context of the passage which means he's not good at the reading skills neither is he good in understanding the grammar because reading and writing blanks only check collocations and grammar so the software will be convinced that this person is not good and that's why the reading and writing score suddenly drops down very quickly you know instead of that if you make one mistake you know in one question another blank out of all five let's say one is wrong in one question one is wrong in the other question it's much better than to get two or three wrong in the same passage and that's why I always tell everybody whether it's my student whether it's any student who is watching this video or not watching the video in reading and writing blanks be extra attentive take more time solve with full concentration try to understand the logic of the passage the context of the passage context is always the key because if you make mistakes then very high chances the score goes down very quickly so that's one of the things you can take away from my session today that be very attentive in the drop down blanks the other major reason why the reading score goes down very very quickly is definitely read aloud read aloud is the first task with which the test starts always and the thing is that in read aloud very clearly pt has written that there should be ideally no false starts false starts means just when the you know when the timer is about to start like three two one you hear a loud beep now let's say immediately the beep you start like let's say there's a passage about abraham lincoln so you just start three two one beep abraham lincoln and again immediately you correct yourself you know abraham lincoln because you think that maybe what i spoke for the first time might have been recorded maybe it's not recorded so basically you repeat the same word again so that's called a false start so this should never happen according to PT because it's a software. And if you repeat the same thing two or three times, obviously it means that you're not fluent. As, as many of you would know, one of the major things to get a very high score in speaking and everything related to it is oral fluency. If you're not fluent, you can never get a good score in speaking or reading because this is an integrated task. And that's why we need to be really confident the way we speak. And generally, there should be no false start. And even if we make a mistake, the best thing is just go with the flow you know instead of avoiding and uh, instead of repeating the mistake just be relaxed and go with the flow that's the best way to deal with such things the other very common mistake is the mistake of singulars and plurals on the screen you might have a sentence which which has three words ending with s you know students things consumes now let's say you say student thing consume because in hurry of being fluent you might make a mistake of not pronouncing the word clearly you know you might miss the s at the end so for us maybe it's a very minor mistake but it's a software and it's a very good software so obviously it will pick up every small mistake you make that's a thing with softwares so just be extra careful with words and with s and es uh, you know these are the things which make a huge difference in the score at the end of the day and if you make the same mistake two or three times and read a lot believe me it's gone the case is over it's really really difficult to you know, recover the marks which you might have lost in read aloud even if you are 100 percent accurate with your blanks in reading with your reorders in reading still i think it's really unlikely that you will manage to get a score more than 79 so just be very careful with read aloud the other thing is that since read aloud is the first task with which the test starts many times people are a bit nervous and in that feeling of nervousness hesitation low confidence you know it's very easy to make a mistake the other thing is that everybody speaks in the same time in the test center and generally everybody is very loud in the test center that's another thing with pt so yeah one more thing those of you who are taking pt for the first time please be clear about this thing that in the real exam everybody speaks at the same time everybody is really loud so it might be a very you know overwhelming experience if you're taking pt for the first time so mentally be prepared that the person next to you is going to be sh almost shouting, literally shouting at the top of his or her voice. And that's the reality with the test. So don't get distracted with it. Instead of that, I always suggest to everybody that when you practice, you know, whether you practice at home or wherever you are practicing, try to pick up a noisy spot for practicing, you know. So generally, whenever like I take a mock test, I pick up the noisiest place available 
for example let's say you go and take a test in a park you know where a lot of children are playing and try to sit as close as possible to them so that there's a lot of disturbance coming from all the directions and in that disturbance you try to concentrate on your test if in such a scenario you manage to get 90 in silence you know or in a slightly subdued environment guaranteed you get 90 so it's mainly about the preparation and the state of mind <clears throat> if your mind is ready to expect the worst you know it will perform its best that's how the mind is conditioned you know so always as I expect the worst and prepare for the best so that's what the state of mind should be the other thing is that in read aloud as soon as the answer is finished please click next immediately don't wait for the bar to reach the end because if you don't speak then obviously it's silence and the software doesn't expect us to be silent so that's why you need to speak and as soon as our speaking part is done next don't wait for the bar to reach the end all right it's not recommended at all the other thing is that many times i've seen people become too conscious in read aloud you know people become so slow the speed of speaking becomes something like this you know hello everyone my name is malcolm i'm taking pt to improve my english i hope my test really goes well and i hope i don't have to take it again and again and again now if you speak like this you know it seems as if I'm trying to speak in a way that I'm trying to impress the software. I become so conscious, I'm stressing on each and every word like this, you know. So that's one of the things we should never do. Just speak in a flat pitch, you know. Because ideally, yes, intonation is good. Intonation means when you stress on the words. Like the word itself is intonation, tone. So how you stress on the words is called intonation. But the problem is the way we speak and by we I mean non-native speakers of English like I am from India I'm not a native speaker of English native speakers are generally people from Australia America Canada US these generally are considered to be native speakers of English and all of us are non-native speakers of English and highly recommended that don't try to mimic the accent try to be, keep your voice as normal as you can try to speak in an accent free way accent free means without any accent that's the best accent according to me so i hope i make few things clear you know the more clarity you will have with the words the better the score will be you don't have to be extra loud but at the same time you should not be too soft because what happens is you know when many people speak at the same time we sometimes lose focus of our own voice you know our own voice drowns in the sea of voices around us it's very common you know if somebody next to you is really loud believe me it's difficult to speak fluently so that's the issue with the test so try to not be distracted and just maintain your own volume you know everything is insulated you just focus on your screen that's your only goal to speak fluently not to stress on the words well Ankit has a question thanks Ankit thanks for joining in you're very regular since the last three weeks I've been following that that's good well the question Ankit has asked is if you are not able to pronounce any word, what should we do? Well, the simple solution is try your best to mimic that word. That's what you do. Because if you say a word wrongly and loudly, then obviously it's going to be a problem. The score definitely goes down. So the worst case scenario, like if you don't know a word on your screen, just try to mimic that word by lowering your volume. You know, just go with the flow. Keep on speaking fluently. Don't stop. Don't correct. Don't hesitate. Right or wrong? Just mimic it and forget it. That's it. So that's what you do if you're not sure with any word on the screen. All right. Well, one more thing why the reading score can go down drastically is also highlight incorrect words. So as many of you would know, highlight incorrect words is the second last task in PTE. And it is the second last task in the listening module of PTE. You'll have a passage and few words will not match with the audio. There will be few words on the passage which will be different from what is played in the audio. Now this task can also be a bit of a problem in the real exam because the audio can be very very fast and the accents can be unclear in this task. So just be a bit careful about highlight incorrect words because if you mess up this task, believe me, however good your remaining test has been, it's really difficult to get 79 in reading because it's an integrated task of listening and reading both. So be extra careful with highlight incorrect words also. Um, and there are also other tasks, you know, like multiple choice single answer, multiple choice multiple answers, highlight correct summary. So these tasks are there in the reading section, 
but they are they are slightly low weight tasks you know so i'm not saying simply ignore them but when you're practicing for the exam don't stress too much on these tasks and the other thing is while you are taking the test don't waste a lot of time on these tasks you know just be a bit quick follow your gut feeling follow your brain follow your instinct all these things just follow but don't dwell too much on a particular question because that will just need lead to wasting time and that time you could have effectively given to other tasks in the reading section like fill in the blanks or reorder paragraphs now one more thing and one more task which can be very um, helpful in improving the reading score is definitely reorder paragraphs in reorder paragraphs the whole scoring depends on the pairs, you know, so just focus on the pairing. Even if your whole paragraph is not right, but the individual pairs, few pairs are right, like one, two, four, five. If these are right, and yes, these can be in any sequence, like four, five can also come before one, two. But you always get one point for four, five, and you get one point for one, two. You get marks only for individual pairs. So try and focus only on individual pairs, and then just block, I mean, put the pairs or blocks of pairs on top of one another. First pair and then play with the blocks around, you know. It's like a puzzle. So treat it like a puzzle. That's what I'll suggest. Well, I got one more comment from Sabir Hassan saying, I've got 64 in listening, 62 in reading, speaking 62 as well, and writing is 70, 59. What should I do to improve my score to 79 plus? Well, Sabir, the first thing you need to work on is your speaking. You definitely need to improve your speaking performance from 62 to 90. And speaking performance or the speaking score mainly depends on oral fluency and pronunciation. So the thing you need to understand is that in all the tasks in speaking, you have to speak at the correct speed. It should not be too slow or it should not be too fast. Second thing you need to focus is the correct pauses. If you don't take the right pauses in the tasks of speaking, then again, the score will not be a good score. So just focus on fluency and pronunciation. By pronunciation, we mainly mean clarity. So try not to stress too much on the words when you're speaking. Try to open the mouth more when you're speaking. I, I think the easiest way to improve the score of pronunciation is, you know, open your mouth more when you speak. Like many times I've seen people speak as if they're talking to themselves, you know. So they speak like this. Hi, my name is Malcolm. I'm from India. Now, if I speak like this, you know, first thing, the confidence is so low. And the second thing is it's not even clear. Instead of that, just be clear. Don't be stressful, but be clear. On, I mean, just have clarity with the words. Well, I've got a comment from <clears throat> Shalini Bathula. How should I overcome the situation when I'm not able to hear properly during speaking? As everyone starts speaking together. Well, one of the things you can do, Shalini, it's a very common thing, like everybody speaks together. So what you can do, you can just try to start your test after some time, you know, just sit in the test center, just read the instructions and just start the test almost after like seven or eight minutes after everyone else has started, you know, because by that time, yes, still the other persons will be speaking, but by the half the time, you know, while you're almost on describe image, everyone else would have finished the test. So at least from describe image to answer your questions, you will have some silence. So that's one way to avoid the disturbance. The other way, as I said, just practice in environments where there's a lot of noise. You know, even when you practice at home, keep your TV on in the background. Keep some radio on in the background. Keep some documentary on in the background. And generally, I suggest try to keep very loud things and very noisy things on in the background. You know, if your brain can manage with that in the real exam, it's a cakewalk. It's really easy. But it's all about how you condition the brain before the test. You know, the preparation is all that matters. If the preparation is 100%, the score has to be 100%. That's how it works generally in the real exam. Thank you. Well, I've got one more comment from Ram. He's saying I've got 72 in speaking. Reading is always 56. Writing 58. Listening 59. I'm looking for 65 each bank. Could you please suggest what to do? Well, the thing is, Ram, you need to work on your speaking. As I said, 72 in speaking, unfortunately, is not enough. You will have to get 90 out of 90 in speaking. As soon as you get 90 in speaking, the score in reading and listening will jump up. The reason you're not getting 90 in speaking is because maybe you're not speaking at the correct speed. Maybe you're not taking the right pauses. Maybe in tasks like repeat sentence and read aloud, you're not performing well. Also in tasks like answer short questions, maybe you're not giving the correct answers. See, all these tasks are integrated and the king of all modules is speaking.
because speaking is integrated with reading and listening and if speaking goes down you can understand everything goes down so that's why you need to work a bit more on your speaking as far as the writing score is concerned try to focus more on the tasks in the other modules which contribute to writing for example summarize spoken text listening fill in the blanks write from dictation reading and writing blanks or drop down blanks in the reading section focus on the other things which contribute to writing more than the actual writing module and yes in the essays and the summaries don't make silly mistakes of spelling and grammar so these are the things where you should focus on if you want your score of 65 each thanks well i've got a comment from saida banu she's saying i've got 89 in speaking 86 in listening 84 in writing and 75 in reading this is twice i lost in reading well saida i think the problem is with read aloud you know read aloud according to me seems to be your biggest weakness at the moment so please focus on read aloud you work on it speak in the correct way and guaranteed you will cross 79 in reading okay i'm using the word guaranteed because from what i think i think the video is interrupted um, and now it is working again all right so as i said try to work on your read aloud sayada that seems to be the only roadblock between you and 79 each in pt so just work on read aloud try to speak at a flat pitch and don't stress too much on the words don't take unnecessary pauses just work on these things thanks well i've got a comment from ubaid rahman and he's saying that he's got 35 38 42 and 46 in reading speaking listening and writing what should i do to get 58 plus well ubaid the thing you need to do is you need to get 90 out of 90 in speaking and believe me it's very very easy to get a high score in speaking if you speak in the right way so just what you need is just a bit of practice and the other thing um, you also need to work on the listening part because I think you're, you might be a bit weak with your listening skills so focus on summarize spoken text in listening also on listening fill in the blanks practice as many questions as you can also focus on write from dictation and in the essay and the summaries don't write complicated sentences just stick to simple sentences the lesser complex the sentence the lesser the chances of mistakes so just stick to simple sentences thank you well ankit has a comment how to pronounce 30 kg slash m square should we say 30 kilogram or should we say 30 kg so actually both are accepted forms of the words but i would recommend you to say 30 kilograms per meter square you can also say 30 kg per m square both are okay all right both would be accepted so don't worry about such things generally such things don't come in the actual in the actual exam so instead of worrying about it just focus on the actual pronunciation of the words which might come in the real exam all right thank you well i've got a question from rahul sukumaran what's the best method for getting maximum score in retail lecture and summarize spoken text well, the best method in retail lecture is try to focus always on fluency and try to get as many words as you can from the audio in your answer because it's about retelling a lecture fluently fluency will decide your speaking score words from the lecture will decide your listening score so try not to follow any template or structure instead of that just try to be very fluent and practice speaking fluently that is the best way i think in retail lecture well, in summarized spoken text, the thing which PT cares about is writing and listening both. For writing, the main requirement is there should be no spelling mistake, no grammar mistakes. And the sentence structure should be coherent and it should be cohesive. Which means you should be using certain types of words like moreover, furthermore, to conclude. Again, I'm saying these are not compulsory, but they always help in a writing score. So try to stick to such type of vocabulary, which is called academic vocabulary for writing. And again, you can follow a template if you wish to, but be very careful with the template because templates may help you, may not help you depending on the template, you know. So that's all I can say. Thank you. Well, Ram has another comment. I'm always struggling in fill in the blanks. Could you suggest any idea how to get good marks and fill in the blanks? Yeah, sure. The best idea would be to work on collocations. On PTE's website, or even if you just Google PTE collocations, you will get the collocation list 
which has been provided by BTE itself. Collocations are words which are co-located. For example, words like academic research, academic journal. These words generally come together. So these words are very helpful and the understanding of these words actually helps in solving reading blanks very quickly. You know, to dash ice means to break ice. That's like a phrase in English, you know. When you're not comfortable with someone, you need to talk. And that's called breaking the ice, you know. So such type of things do come in the real exam. They could be like phrasal collocations, like academic collocations, or grammar-based collocations. Grammar means like engage in something, connect to, according to, correlate with. So these words are called grammar-based collocations, you know. So this is what we need to study. This is what you need to improve. And the thing is, always focus on the context of the passage, you know. Try to understand what the passage is about because that's what will give you a better edge on or better idea or understand the whole passage. <clears throat> well, Kiran has another comment. Any tips for reading and writing fill ups? Yeah, the best technique is called elimination. Generally, you get four options or maximum five options in a drop down menu. First, think and select the best word which you think might fit. And you know, actually, even before you click, just try to guess what can fit in the blank, you know. So just read the passage, and that's what I do, that's what I suggest to everyone. Without clicking, just think which word will fit for around five seconds. Some word will come to your brain, you know, come to your mind, actually. Then click. See if that word which you think is there or not. If that word is not there, try to think of a very similar word which is there in the list. And just put word and word at a time. If it sounds right, it is the right answer. If it doesn't sound right, it is never the right answer. So always you need to understand that the word which sounds best will fit best. And that takes time, that takes practice. So that's why when you are practicing drop down blanks, never hurry. Take your time, be relaxed. That's the best way to deal with drop down blanks in my opinion. Thank you. Well, Sayada has another comment. Are there any changes or updates in the reading section? Is this true? Well, the only update about reading section is that in the month of June, PT updated their score guide in which they have now mentioned that reading section will have tasks in a fixed order. Earlier, it could be in any order. The sequence was not decided. Now, they have said that the five tasks in reading will always come in a fixed order. The first task will be reading and writing fill in the blanks, which are popularly called drop down blanks. The second task will be multiple choice, choose multiple answers. The third task will be reorder paragraphs. The fourth task will be multiple choice, choose single answers. And the fifth task will be I'm sorry, the fourth task will be the drag and drop blanks. My apologies. I'll start from the beginning. The first task will be drop down blanks or reading and writing blanks. The second task will be multiple choice, choose multiple answers. The third task will be reorder paragraphs. The fourth task will be reading blanks or drag and drop blanks. And the fifth task will be multiple choice, choose single answer. So that's the only update in reading either. There has been no other update at all. All right. Thanks. Well. To get 65, the fill in the blanks will matter a lot. Yes, Ram, definitely to get 65 and to get 79, fill in the blanks definitely matter a lot. But there are other tasks that also matter, like read aloud, summarize written text, highlight incorrect words. So focus your energy also on those tasks because those can give you a higher score. Thank you. Well, I think I've answered a lot of questions and I'm just looking if there are any more questions which I can answer. But yes, I'll just... Your quick summary like what to do in case you're looking for a very high score in reading. Just focus on the basics, you know, the main tasks. Like one is read aloud, second is fill in the blanks in reading section. And by fill in the blanks, I mean both the types of blanks, drop down blanks and drag and drop blanks. Both are very important for the reading score. After that, the next task which we should focus on is summarize written text. If you don't pick up the correct words from the passage in your answer, then it's a big problem for the reading score. The other very important task is reorder paragraphs because that also contributes greatly sometimes to the reading score. And the last task is highlight incorrect words. So mainly these are the five very important tasks which are very, very important for the reading score. Well, one more question by Ankit. In retail lecture, if we cannot note many points, what should we do? Well, then if you don't have many points, you can just try to repeat few points, maybe two times. That's what you can do. Because minimum you should speak at least 25 seconds. You know, the more you speak, the better in retail lecture. So at least 
15 words should not be difficult to note from the lecture in my opinion you can easily note down 15 words you know the more you know the better so try to be a bit quick practice it enough you know it's all about practice it's nothing like you cannot do I, I mean if you practice why not see so you can do you should be able to do it that's what I think well one more thing like Yesterday and today, in the two days which have passed, six of my students have got eight each. All right, six students in two days have got eight each. And in the month of July, I think almost like 14 students or 15 students of mine have got eight each in the first 11 days, sorry, 12 days of this month. So not a bad way to start the month of July. And hopefully in the coming days, many more students will also get eight each. And many will also get seven each. Also, one more announcement that next Saturday, that's 20th of July, Saturday. I'll be having my master class in Melbourne CBD. The address will be 290 Collins Street, um, Melbourne CBD. The class will start at 10 a.m. in the morning and will finish around 4.30 or 5 p.m. in the evening. So the registrations are going on. The link for the master class is also shared in the comment section. So if any one of you is in Melbourne and is looking for main techniques and if you're very close to your desired score, please feel free to attend it. I've got people also coming from far away, like people from Tasmania and Canberra also attend the class because unfortunately we don't have the coaching over there. So that class should be very helpful for all of you. Well, one last question I'll take from Kumar Manish. During speaking section, any tips to avoid getting distracted by the noise around? Yes, Kumar Manish, definitely. When you practice this task at home, practice in a noisy environment. You know, create some noise if there is no noise. So at least your brain gets used to it because in the real exam, you cannot ask everybody to shut up. You know, we cannot ask everybody to lower their volumes. The best we can do, we manage. How do we manage? By managing our brain, by practicing prior to the test in the same environment. So that's the way we should be prepared to deal with it. Um, well, one last question, one more question from Saida. How to pick up the correct words and summarize written text and how to phrase them in a sentence? Sorry to ask you so many questions, but yes, you are the PT guru. I cannot resist myself but to ask and clear my doubts. Also, could you let us know the repeated essays for this month, please? Yeah, first I'll tell you about the repeated essays. When it comes to essays, the most repeated essay for the month of May, June, both the months, couple of essays. One is definitely about credit cards. You know, the essay goes exactly like this. A cashless society is becoming a reality. More and more people are using credit cards and less people are using cash these days. What could be the potential benefits or the drawbacks linked with this and give your opinion. So this is one of the most repeated essays in the month of May and June. The other essay which comes a lot is like these days large shopping malls are replacing small shops or small local shops. Do you think it's an advantage or a disadvantage? Give your opinion. So this is the second repeated essay. The third repeated essay is advancements in medical technology enhance human longevity. Is it a blessing or a curse? Give your opinion. So these three essays have been coming a lot. And uh, yeah, another essay which comes is about experiential learning. Is experiential learning better than traditional learning? What are the pros and cons? Give your own experience or share examples from your own experience. So these four essays, yes, they have been coming a lot. Chances are you could also get one of these in your next test. Well, the other question which you asked was how to pick up the correct words in summarize written text. Well, in summarize written text, actually just look for the repeated words in the passage. Try to get an overall idea of what is the you know, passage trying to tell you. And always think from the software's perspective. If I am PTE, for which words from the passage will I give a maximum score? You know, which are the most important words in the passage? So just scan and skim the passage for the first 30 seconds. I think you have got like very high scores in the other modules. Your brain will definitely pick up the main words. So try to go for the repeated words, the most important nouns, the most important action words or verbs in the passage, you know. So generally that's how you get the important words. Also try to find out something in the introduction or the conclusion. Many times those have very important words. So generally try to look out for these things in the passage. Well, one more comment from Dimuthi. In SST, can we note down 10 to 15 nouns and put it in a template? Will it work or not? Well, it can work. If the template is a good one, it can work, definitely. So yeah, you can try that. Definitely can, can, can. The answer is yes, it can. 
Well, uh, Rina is asking, can you please post the link for the master class? Hi, Rina. Thanks for the comment. The link has already been posted. If you just scroll down, you'll just see it a bit lower in the comment section. All right. So friends, with that, I think I'll end the class. And every time I announce it, that we have a new class in Melbourne CBD. That's at Elizabeth Street. As soon as you exit the Flinders Street station towards Elizabeth Street, it's just on the left hand side next to McDonald's. It's one of the biggest McDonald's in Melbourne CBD. And just next to it, you have our office of Aussies group. And we run the classes over there. So now there are two locations in the city. One is 290 Collins Street and second is 7-9 Elizabeth Street. Both are pretty close to each other. I conduct the classes at both the places. So don't miss out on the classes. You'll get the value for your money and definitely you'll get your score. That's the most important thing. And yes, the next master class is next Saturday. That's 20th July. So till then, keep practicing. Think PT, think PT tutorials. And remember, always aim for 90 in PT. And that's why my name is Malcolm 90909090 on Telegram. Till then, see you all. Have a good night. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. My name is Malcolm.